This is a Hi-Fi X, and it's a little bit like a Tesla Model X, only it's built in China. Now, I've never really seen this car before, and you're gonna join me as I experience it for the very first time. I've not even sat inside it before, so this review is gonna be a little bit different than normal, but let's do it. Buy, sell, car, wow. I'm gonna start off by having a look at the design of this car. Rear end, it's quite interesting. It's obviously a full length light bar and that's unusual. Lots of little LEDs there. I imagine they can display various little patterns and stuff like that. Not so sure about the fake diffuser. It's quite a sleek design for a MPV SUV and alloy wheels, quite like the look of them. They're big, what are they? What size? 22s. I also like the matte paint. Let's have a look at the front of this thing. Ah, yeah, I was right. Look, you can see big LED panel there and you can obviously display various patterns probably be able to do it through the infotainment system. I quite like the look of it to tell you the truth. Now let's get inside it. So I can't see any door handles. Can you? I think you press this. Yes, and the door opens electrically. It's like on a BMW i7. So I'm gonna jump in. If you go around the other way. So you can open it on the screen. And I just wanna check something out with this door. I wonder if it's like a Rolls Royce where you press the, yeah, the brake pedal and it'll shut the driver's door. Let's have a look at this. Oh, there's a 3D graphic of the car. All the car's functions are actually done through this screen. Look at this surround view camera. What else have we got on here? Obviously the climate controls all through here. Front row, back row, and um, we've seen that. What else, what else, what else? Apps, digital lights, there we go. So, oh look, pixel lights. So you can actually put different displays on those light banks that I showed you at the front, although it's seeming to take ages. Bored of that already, let's come out of that. Projection text, so you can actually project things on the ground in front of you and on a wall. Uh, yeah, so it looks like there's no actual like data to choose what you wanna show. Oh well. Let's move on to this screen. Look, we've got a big landscape screen, which seems like a big waste of space. So you're only really looking at the speedo there here on the steering wheel, which feels rather nice and expensive. You've got these track pads here, which I think allow you to move through various menus. I'm hearing a tapping sound, like I'm moving through a menu, but I'm not seeing any changes at all on the screens. Interior quality in here is pretty good though. I'm like this, feels quite nice. Oh, got a sunroof up here. And check this out, look, rear view camera. So you don't have a rear view mirror, you have a rear view camera. What's the reason for that? Oh, look, the view out the back window is atrocious. However, look, maybe, yes, there's a button. I can go to the mirror. Can you see, look, there's the mirror, there's the camera. There's the mirror, there's the camera, there's the mirror. Actually, you get a bit of a weird double thing on the camera. Can you see, you can actually see the reflection. So you can probably see me and the image. It's almost like you've done a load of LSD. I haven't ever done a load of LSD. Oh, there's another screen here. I've only just noticed it because when you view it from an angle, you can't see it. It's like got a privacy protection on it, like on computer screens that your HR departments have, so you can't see everyone's salary. But when you're deadhead on, you can see that there's various functions and menus and stuff. Don't really know how to operate it, but I can't see it from where I'm sitting as the driver, so it doesn't distract me, which is good. So let's see what kind of things we have in terms of storage. Wireless charging under there, cup holders there. That's obviously the car's key, I'd imagine. Under here, some more storage, some USBs, some coins, euros. And then the seats, very comfy seats, these. I quite like them, actually. I like the design of them as well. Lots of adjustment. Steering wheel moves as well, obviously, electrically. Feels very plush. Oh, and look, we've got some more storage underneath here. There is one thing that's missing though. There is no glove box, but I guess that's the price you pay for having that huge screen there for your front passenger. What I'm gonna do now is jump in the back and see what that's like. So, can I open the rear door from here? There we go. Oh, actually, look at that. Wow! I'm gonna do the other side as well so you can see it. That is mega. I like that. Look, hello. <laughs> this feels really special. Wow. Let me just shut this up. Oh, what have I done? Oh, there we go. Seems to want to do one at a time. Why can't I shut this? Oh, there we go. So apparently you can get this car with two seats here and 
another two behind it. This one doesn't have it, this is the four seater. Feels quite nice. There is enough leg room for me, enough knee room. I'm guessing you can like recline these seats, but I've no idea how you do it. They seem quite nice though. There's this screen here. Oh, and it says seats lock. Here we go. Getting my foot rest up. Now that's stupid. It's for someone with really short legs. And let me recline the backrest. Wait a minute, this seems pointless. This is not working out too well. This is supposed to be like business class and it's just getting rid of all of my leg room. <laughs> this is stupid. They haven't really designed this particularly well because look at this. I like the idea, but it's not really working out, is it? Okay, right, let's, let's just put this back. Is there a button to put it back? No. Oh, yes, there is. That's better. Although I don't think the driver's gonna to be too happy with the seat in that position. Oh well, let's see what's under here. Ooh, look. I've got some tables. Well, oh, this feels quite expensive actually. Look at that. That's really nice. Ooh. Uh, what else have we got? What's in here? What does that do? Hello? Ooh was not expecting that, nor that. Shame I don't drink. Also, shame it's not champagne, it's just Prosecco. But I still like that. Is it cold? It doesn't seem cool, maybe it is cold. <laughs> that is nice, that is. It's a shame that there's not more space when you actually recline the chair but other than that the actual room back here is okay just when you're in the normal seating position what else have we got we can control the lighting we can what can we do with the roof i don't know do lighting in the roof oh look different themes star trek urban travel deep sea forest comfort there's the fridge oh yeah you can set the fridge temperature there look okay let's check out the boot here we go I imagine the boot isn't going to be all that big because of all like the, the seats and stuff and indeed it's not, look, that big lump there is because of that fridge. So it's not the most practical thing. And there's all your charging cables underneath there. But I do quite like it. I'm going to go around now and shut all the doors. So I guess I just press that button and that button. Let's do them on the other side as well. I do strangely like this, it's interesting. Now in terms of the price, it's available in Europe, but when you translate to pounds, it's about 95,000 pounds, which seems like quite a lot, but it does seem luxurious and it's got a lot of tech on it. Plus it's got a big battery, 97 kilowatt hours. So that's good for a range of around 400 miles. It's got dual electric motors, one at the front and one at the back. And combined they put out almost 600 horsepower. Anyway, I think I want to drive it now. Let's start off by seeing what this Hi-Fi X is like to drive in town. So I've got the suspension in comfort mode and it feels nice and soft and yeah, quite relaxing. There is one thing I've noticed though. If you hit sharp bumps or bigger bumps, you do get a bit of a jolt through the cabin. It doesn't quite soak up bumps as sophisticatedly or as smoothly as a BMW iX. And if you wanna see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there or find the link in the description below. Now, forward visibility is good. Door mirrors, not quite as big as you'd expect, but they're large enough, but the view at the back window is atrocious. And while I can like view like that, you've got the problem I mentioned earlier of you get this double image thing. Anyway, might have a problem now, gonna try and do a U-turn. Can I get round? I am definitely engaging my 360 degree cameras. So the turning circle is 11.6 meters, which is good for a car this size. Is it gonna make that round? That is so tight. Camera says yes, I'm going for it. By comparison, that BMW iX I mentioned, its turning circle is 12.5 meters. This is a big car and that is really maneuverable. I am mightily impressed with that. And the steering is not overly light, but it's definitely not heavy. I'm impressed with that as well. Now let me just try one other thing. I've got the regen in maximum. Let's see what it's like at slowing the car when I lift off the accelerator. So I've lifted off and it's taking a long time to slow. Is that definitely in maximum? 
Yeah, as you can see, there appears to be one pedal drive because you can turn off the creep function so it won't creep forward if you're not pressing the accelerator. But it's not particularly strong in town, so you will have to touch the brake pedal. So not proper one pedal driving, I'm afraid. It's a shame, it pretty much does everything, but not that for some reason. If you're going quicker, you do notice more regen braking than when you're going slowly. It seems to taper off. Generally, for driving around town, this seems pretty decent. That of course, off. yeah, the back window and the reflections. That is something that I don't think would have got through quality control through one of the mainstream manufacturers, say from Germany. Now we've come to some faster roads, so let's see what it's like at going from 40 miles an hour to 70. So here we go, I'm gonna floor it. Oh, yeah, it becomes really strong, and that's job done. Now, as I'm cruising along at 70, there is a bit of wind noise from there and a little bit of tyre noise as well. In fact, the tyre noise is more noticeable. Another thing I've noticed are a few rattles and squeaks, and this button in the door seems to rattle. I can stop it by just touching it. According to Hi-Fi, this is an early car. I don't know if that's a kind of get out of jail free car to the fact that maybe it doesn't feel quite so well screwed together as some other mainstream European electric cars. Though to be fair, it does feel a little bit Tesla-like. However, it's generally really comfortable to just sit in and cruise along. I could do as many miles as the battery would allow me. And I would like to tell you the range, or is it? We've got range of 370 kilometers actually, but what will it actually do on a full charge? Well, I have no idea how to access the trip computer, so I can't tell you, sorry. Finally then, let's try this big Hi-Fi X out on a twisty road. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the paddle, put it into sports mode, immediately notice that the throttle response is sharper and the pickup is, it's even quicker. Wow, it's also stiff in the suspension though it's not overly stiff. It's still pretty decent over bumps. And this part of the road is quite jittery. And there is a bit of fidget, but it's not terrible. It's actually doing a decent job. I'll tell you what I'm surprised at. It actually goes around corners pretty well. Big, heavy, electric SUV. She'll probably topple over right now, but blooming heck. <laughs> that is way better than I imagined. I imagine you might reach this point where it just doesn't grip and the front wheels give up and the tires let go and you just push on, but it's actually doing surprisingly well. There is a little bit of lineage, but it's not too bad. There's the tires going, but wow, I am surprised. I mean, the steering is very artificial feeling, but it puts the car where you want it to go. And I was quite amazed by that. This thing actually drives really quite nicely. So then what's my final verdict on the Hi-Fi X? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I actually really like the way it drives. I like the way it looks. I like its technology. I'm a little bit disappointed about the practicality, but there's just something kind of cool and quirky about it. For that reason, I reckon you should shortlist it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of this car in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWow to sell your car the easy way. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. It's easy.